Christmas Day 5 and I thought today I would focus on Yule and what we do to celebrate here as a family. Yule as it's celebrated today has become an amalgamation resource of ancient traditions. Now these ancient traditions we only know certain aspects of, that those that were documented and the rest we've kind of filled in ourselves from seasonal cues. Just like I explained earlier with Samhain it's the same with Yule, only there are more written documentations about Yuletide practices than there is Samhain practices. The time known here as Yule, the winter solstice or the equinox, is celebrated to welcome the returning light. Yule is the longest night of the year and the shortest day. From this point on, the light gradually begins to return as the nights become shorter and the days become longer. It's a transition point between what we call the dark half and the light half. And if you've watched my previous vlogs, you will see on them that I explained that the ancient Celts split the year in half. So we had the dark half of the year and the light half of the year. So today I'm going to explain what I do to celebrate Yule. And I'll also briefly mention some activities that I include the children in on. Because I don't like to enforce my beliefs upon them. But I do teach them about Yule in the same way that I teach them about other festivals at this time of year. And with many of those you'll likely see a huge similarity with the modern day Christmas. So Yule also represents that coming out of the dark, the illumination of the dark. And it's a time of joy and celebration. Looking forward to the brighter, lighter months as the wheel turns yet again. And before we know it, in bulk will be upon us. I do enjoy the dark half personally, but it is a difficult time for many and I do understand and respect that. However, I love the cosy evenings. I love curling up with the kids on the couch. I love watching movies. I love having hot chocolates together, cheeky mulled wine now and again. And I just love the whole infectious magic of the season and the infectious joy of the season that being a parent brings. And I am aware there's a cost of living crisis. However, Yule isn't celebrated in the same commercialised fashion as Christmas. Even gifts tend to be handmade or more sentimental. And a lot of the time, there'll be natural items that people have foraged and put together as a gift. Now, for my children, Odin does bring a present, but it's either handmade or it costs below £10. Yule is when, as a family, we celebrate the uncommercialised aspect or spirit of Christmas, I guess. And it's when we connect with each other, spend more intimate time with each other in the home. We're out and about less, I guess. I mean, we still do a lot of outdoor activities. But for most, for the most part, we're home a lot more and we spend that quality time together of an evening too. So we like to bring that light into the home and one of the ways we do that is by candles. Now I think candles are going to become much more necessary over the next few months as many families are deciding to try and cut back um, on their cost of living and are looking for alternative ways of generating light and warmth in the home. So, I mean, this is a great time to introduce some candle magic into your life, to be honest, because you may as well and use some colour symbolisation to bring in the positive intentions for the months ahead. The colours associated with you are green, gold and red. In times past, candles would have made all the difference to the survival of our ancestors and their comfort over the dark half. Now, you tends to be celebrated on the 21st of December, However, when you consult the almanac and go by the almanac calendar, it can fall either side of that by a day or two. Many cultures celebrated it over a period of three days or more. So again, it gives you a bit of leeway there too. And there's plenty of give and take. And I'll also touch briefly on some of the ancient practices that we do know of. From the winter equinox on, the sun rays are slightly higher in the sky. And the season itself is infused with hope and excitement for the coming lighter months ahead. It's all about rebirth and renewal after the dark cold months. In ancient Germanic tradition, pagans would also light up their homes with candles. However, back then, they would put real candles on their pine trees, which we would now be horrified at the mere suggestion of doing. But again, that's where many people suspect that we get our fairy light tradition from. The Norse pagans would light bonfires and they would also bring trees into the home and they would be evergreens, usually pine but evergreens. 
and they would adorn them with decorations to represent the returning of the sun. And they also had our Yule log, and in them countries it was referred to as Jol or Jewel. The trees would be decorated with orb shaped objects to represent the sun itself. And obviously our modern day baubles tend to be orb shaped. They would celebrate it over a three day period with lots of alcohol and shenanigans. And we have records of big feasts and communal gatherings and drinking. But we don't actually have much record of what they did ritually or spiritually. The sagas do however give some insight. So they're always worth looking into because they're a great read and they're really interesting and it's a great way of getting to know the myths of the past and how our ancestors would have celebrated. So we obviously have a tree in our home. Unfortunately we can't have real because of the dogs so we do have a fake one in substitute to represent that evergreen energy of abundance, fertility, renewal, strength, endurance and health. And you'll probably see over the next few weeks we'll be making our own decorations for it as well. I mean you've already seen some of them that we've made over the past few years but we will be making more this year to be adding on and there'll be various different vlogmas vlogs over the, over the coming days ahead. So the first lot that we're going to be making will be our orange slices which will dehydrate and then get on the tree and that represents that solar energy. And it was used in the past. Oranges were used in the season in the past to represent that sun, the solar energy. And again, we see that in our tangerines in the stockings too. And that citrus scent is also very uplifting. It's perfect for this time of year because it uplifts the soul and helps bring in that joy and that harmony. And we'll also be adding in cinnamon, which goes without saying. And cinnamon represents protection, health and longevity. And that's obviously alongside the general baubles and our star baubles, which again represents that soul and that sacred energy. You will have noticed on our tree we have a lot of red and gold on there, which again are the colours of the season. Another fun activity that you can do with children is stringing popcorn and dry cranberries. Because again, the cranberries bring in that energy of abundance and health while representing the natural world because it's also with the season of the berries. And the popcorn would represent a good harvest for the year ahead. So abundance in that respect as well. And so it's a great way of bringing your children into your Yuletide activities. On Yule itself, we will obviously have our Yule meal. And that will be a lovely feast. And again, I do it on a budget. I'll probably use up whatever root veg I have left in the fridge from previous meals that week. I'll um, roast a joint due to the Norse connection there. So chestnuts in with different recipes as well. The Sunday before you, I actually have a group of friends come around and we gather around the dark moon phase really I guess. And that will be for a communal celebration together. We're going to start off the day with a bit of a therapy share because many of us are qualified in various illicit therapies so we give that to each other. That quality time just to heal yourself and have that pamper that most therapists forget to give, especially this time of year when we're all run off our feet. So be a shared feast and then we will be doing various things to bring in that positive energy ourselves as a group. The day itself of you is dedicated to family. So herbs and plants that I work with this time of year are obviously mistletoe. And again, that's a symbolisation of that fertile energy, that abundance and the health and well-being of the body, mind and soul. That resilience. And that's where we get our kissing under a mistletoe ring coming into. And mistletoe, due to its evergreen nature, its hardy nature, would also represent that strong harvest for the coming year ahead. Holly is also linked with you, protective and in abundance at this time of year. And pine is one of my favourite herbs. It's a wonderful plant to connect with, especially after these long, dark, cold nights. When so many of us have been isolated at home too due to the weather, due to circumstances. So this is a wonderful plant to bring in because it really does uplift those those moods. And pine also has lots of potent antiviral properties for this time of year. It is a fantastic one for overall health and well-being through the cold months. And I'm going to be having a mug of pine tea shortly. I love it before bed to be honest with you. Really helps me wind down for the evening. It's great. Another fun activity to do with your children is to tie your wishes to the tree. And this again is all about intention. 
and bringing in that positive intention and you're putting it next to all your positive representations and symbology that's already on the tree so it ties all that energy together nicely and as a family we'll do this on yule itself and then when we take the tree down we'll take them wishes outside and we'll offer them to the gods by burning them now another take on that is the tradition with bay leaves and you can do the same thing with them you can write your wish on a bay leaf and you can burn it and that is going to be an activity that we're doing at the sunday group meeting as well so we'll all be doing that together there as a group i've already mentioned red green and gold candles and where we will we would bring them colors of candles into the home and obviously our candles can also be adorned decorated anointed with oils and even engraved incense that i burn this time of the year is frankincense may not surprise you really considering the association with christmas that we already know of and this is for its cleansing protective and uplifting properties mare again great for overall health and well-being and pine and again i've already explained where we would work with pine at this time of year and then obviously there's the tradition of the yule log which i also include the children in the making of and we do a food variation of it a chocolate cake one and that's one of the delicious aspects of yule or the baking I absolutely love it as as children and then our more traditional yule log made out of wood and we decorate that as a family together as well and i get the children involved in that once it's burned we keep a piece of that for the following year and use that as kindling to like next year's yule fire but other families may have their own yule log traditions and then we've got homemade baubles and this is an activity my children really enjoy and now they just make basic christmas baubles to go on the tree However, I like to incorporate my Yuletide practices into my bauble making as well. And these are sometimes called witches' balls. And these are protective baubles made with intention. They are then hung in the windows to attract that energy in. And they tend to contain herbs, grows, and natural representations of the season or natural representations of what you want to bring into the year ahead. So I'll probably post a blog of me making one of my witches' balls next week. So if that's something you would like to keep up to date on and see then don't forget to hit the follow button now another interesting aspect of this is the odin's oaths and oaths at this time of year were considered very sacred to the norse if you broke an oath at this time of the year you could actually be punished for it and this is another potential link for our modern new year resolutions because we would make oaths in front of the gods at this time of year in the norse tradition with our intentions for the coming year ahead and if we broke them intentions then obviously the punishment would be far more severe than anything that would ever happen today for breaking a new, a new year's resolution and balls being sacred to the norse at this time of year would be included in that celebration of the oath and that is why i tend to do a pork joint at yule so just to recap the whole spirit of yule is a coming of the light the return of the sun and to herald in the lighter months and all that positive energy that we're looking forward to ahead so over the next couple of days i'm going to be delving into further different aspects in more detail but if you have any questions please feel free to put them in the comments below and i will get back to you don't forget to hit like and follow and i'll catch you for vlogmas number six tomorrow thanks for watching and i hope you found this informative and interesting our start of the day was quite lovely. The elves brought some lovely card writing activities for Nim. Um, it was a resource of Twinkle 3D cards, which she then made. Some of them she coloured in herself, some were pre-coloured in. She enjoyed that. As you can see, um, we've laid it all out with two, and then you can take each name off. And that allows Nim to do this independently and build up that confidence with her writing skills. And it just reinforces a lot of the learning that we've been doing recently. But this is a great activity for building those key skills in our early learners. <laughs> what do you think of it, Lim? It's really cool. I was surprised when you even see it. Where are you? <laughs> I woke up first and saw the. I know, I can't believe they've done that. It's, it's so messy. It's going to take Mummy all day to clean this. I mean, look at it. Messy elves.
Have you seen what they brought you? They brought your cards to make your own Christmas card. Santa. You want to do one to Santa too? Oh, Papa's doing that in the post. Oh, Santa. 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 Oh, Santa.